have a look at this, would you? Another postcard perfect morning. But we're not camping on Fraser. We're not even on Morton Island. In fact, we're on the incredible North Stratty Island. And with incredible beaches, heaps of camping that you need a four-wheel drive to get to, and stunning natural attractions all just a stone's throw from home, I reckon this is Brisbane's ultimate adventure destination. So Stratty's an island, and that means you'll need to book a ride on the ferry across. Prices vary depending on peak or off-peak times, but start at around $80 for a four-wheel drive, plus $14.50 a metre for trailers. Book online at stradbrokeferries.com.au. The trip takes about 40 minutes. Oh, Stratty. Stratty. You. All camping and four-wheel driving on the island requires permits and can be done online or at the Welcome Centre as you come off the ferry. Now, if you do book online, don't forget to pick up your permits from the Welcome Centre. Amity Point is the ideal first stop when you get off the ferry. It's an easy 15 minute drive from the ferry and it's all tarmac the whole way. Amity is perfect for families. The caravan parks right on the water. There's a netted swimming area for kids and the sunsets out to the west are just beautiful. And if you bought a boat, then there's a boat ramp here too. But if you don't want to camp in civilization, then don't stress because Flinders Beach is just around the corner. So here is the perfect place to air the tires down and hit the sand. While Stratty is obviously an island and there's a heap of beaches, there's only two beaches that you can actually four-wheel drive on. Flinders Beach here at the top end of the island and then the main beach right down the eastern side. Whatever beach you drive on, remember two things. You need a four-wheel drive access permit, get it from the same place that you get your camping permits when you come off the ferry and you need to air your tyres down because that's some pretty soft sand. Time for a bit of beach driving. The typical sand driving rules apply on Stratty. Air down to around 16 psi to avoid getting bogged and remember to drive to the tides. The period between two hours before low tide and two hours after. Stratty's best campsites are located at the end of sandy tracks. Love these sandy little inland tracks, they're cool. It's a mad good bit of fall driving. Yeah. Always makes it fun, a bit of challenging stuff on the way to camp. Yep. Now you can see what I mean here. The access track is super soft, and that's where low tire pressures make all the difference. If you're dreaming about waterfront camping, then Stratty has it in droves. Have a look at this view. Check that out. Flinders Beach dead set waterfront camping at its best. We found this awesome spot that was way too good to pass up. And a cheeky little trick that I always use when I go beach camping is to set my gazebo up. That way, no one can pinch the spot. We can go do a little bit more exploring because the sun's still up and there's still heaps more to see on the island for the afternoon. That way we're guaranteed this perfect spot when we come back to Sabo. Now, I don't mean to sound selfish when I say that, but the reality is that Stratty camping is incredibly popular. And especially if you're like me and you've got mates turning up later on tonight, if you don't jump on a good campsite early, then you're gonna struggle later on in the day. Cylinder Beach is located on the northeast corner of the island. It's regularly patrolled. There's a little lagoon for splashing around in and as it's protected from the southerly winds, it's a great place to get a wave. There's even a caravan park right on the dunes if bush camping isn't your thing. And here's an island secret. If you get up nice and early, you've got a good chance to get the whole beach to yourself for a surf or a paddle. Check it out. This is paradise. Okay, that's enough for today. Let's head back and set up camp. Now when the southerlies blow, and they often do here at Stratty, then the best option for bush camping is here at Flinders Beach, because you're camping in amongst these amazing trees that provide a sensational windbreak, and it's often a lot more protected than camping on the main beach, when you get those southerlies come straight in off the eastern side. Now there's definitely no facilities out here, so you've got to be completely self-sufficient, but when you book your camping permit, you can pay an extra $10 a night for access to the amenities block 
at Lookout Point, and that is definitely worth it, especially if you've got the family, if you've got the missus, the kids, it's a cracking idea. So this is one of my all-time favorite things to do on Stratty. You can get fresh seafood at a couple of places on the island straight off the trawler. So there's nothing better than a kilo of prawns as the sun goes down. <laughs> What a sensational morning. To me, this is what beach camping is all about. A brilliant night sleeping, listening to the waves all night, and waking up to incredible views and sunrises over the water. I just don't think you can beat that. Today's plan is to explore more of the top end of Stratty, so we're going to pack up camp and hit the road. No trip to Stratty's complete without doing the epic gorge walk. The North Gorge Boardwalk is an easy 45 minute round trip walk from Point Lookout. Along the way you'll see stunning scenery out over the ocean and you might even be lucky enough to see some of the locals. <laughs> Righto, now that silly healthy walking nonsense is done and dusted, there's no way that you can come to Point Lookout without visiting the famous Oceanic Gelati. It's about as far from roughing it as you can get, but that's the beauty part about Stratty, you get both ends of the spectrum. Now we're going to head south via Main Beach to check out some more of Stratty's full drive only campsites. These are seriously worth the drive. In fact, I reckon they even leave Fraser Island's best campsites in their dust. They're that good. I think this is our campsite right here. Oh my god. <laughs> Hold on. It's part of the fun of Stratty. It's getting into camp. And this is the epic part of main beach camping on Stratty. Just have a look at this, how good is it? Now it is a bit blustery today because those sudlies, they do blow right in. But the best part about camping on main beach, it's away from the crowds. And as you just saw, you need a four wheel drive to get into the campsites. How good is this? <laughs> you can't stay at Main Beach Campground and not visit Brown Lake. It's only a short drive and it's well worth it. So this right here is Brown Lake and it's a popular tourist spot, particularly because it's two wheel drive accessible. But let me show you a hidden secret to this cracker of a place. Don't stop at the car park, follow this sandy track at the end of the car park. That's the beauty of having a four wheel drive on Stratty. You can get to places that others can't. I reckon Brown Lake is the perfect example of what makes Stratty so good. Yeah, you've got the cool touristy bits, but if you're willing to explore just that little bit further, you're rewarded with private bits of paradise. How good is this? Okay, so we weren't blessed with the best weather on this trip, but when the sun's shining, there are few places anywhere that rival just how good Stratty is. In fact, I reckon it's the ultimate family destination. Plenty of remote camping and just enough luxury and things to do to keep the whole family entertained. Well, there you go, North Stratty. What an incredible place. It's got everything from touristy hotspots that you just can't miss to secluded bits of paradise away from the crowds. One thing's for certain though, you've got to come and experience this for yourself. Brisbane's Adventure Playground is too good to miss.